All right, guys, here's the deal. Few of you have probably watched that video that we did recently in Georgia with Dr. Mike Chamberlain and his students from UGA. They know more about turkeys than I probably ever will. And they've been doing a ton of work down there on that WMA that we featured in that video. I'm not gonna get into all the details of that video. Y'all can just go back and watch it. We'll post a link down there below. But the purpose of today's video is to let y'all know that we at THP are trying to create some sort of a fundraiser, a donation program, where we can fund turkey research in the Southeast. Now we're pretty small, so we can't just take on a bunch of different states at once. The goal is for us is to be able to fund a research project in the Southeast to learn more about turkeys and then go down there next spring, film the project and film the progress of the project while we're down there turkey hunting next year. That way y'all can see where your dollars are going. And I'm not just blowing smoke here, guys. Anybody that helps us donate to this research is going to see exactly where that money is going. Because when we go down there and create this video, I'm gonna list every single name of every single person on the screen that helped us get this research project going. Now, for this one in particular, I've been talking to Dr. Chamberlain. As you all saw in that video, they're using those song meters in Georgia to monitor gobbling activity. This is a very big deal. There's a lot of states out there that don't have this type of data. And just recently, Mike and his team have created a much more efficient process at monitoring that gobbling data. I'll get into more details about that in just a second. But what we're trying to do is raise $35,000 to put three research sites on the ground in Alabama by next spring. That money is gonna to go to purchasing song meters that measure gobbling data, and Mike is wanting to get one site in Southern Alabama, one in Central Alabama, and one in Northern Alabama. As I mentioned, gobbling data is incredibly important to these agencies because it's the most important determinant of hunter satisfaction. I'm sure most of you are like us. When you go to the woods, you wanna hear birds gobbling. That's why we go spring turkey hunting for the most part is to hear the turkeys gobbling. So if we're going out there and we're not hearing gobbling activity, that's a major problem for us. If these state agencies can better understand gobbling activity in their state and even regions of their state, they can better understand the complexities of ensuring happy hunters and sustainable populations of birds in that area. Alabama lacks this information, and if you wanna see some of the data from Central Georgia from Mike's study, I'll put some of it up here on the screen. You can see what the gobbling data looks like throughout the spring. This is on a heavily hunted WMA in Georgia. Mike and his team have also done research on non-hunted sites, and they have gobbling data from them as well. That's the moral of the story, is the more areas we can get these song meters in across the board, the more we can learn about gobbling data in those particular states. I don't know about you guys, but if I'm traveling to a new state to hunt and that particular agency has data on gobbling activity throughout the spring, I'm gonna look at that stuff before I go because I'm very interested in the, those peaks and valleys and gobbling. Alabama is an incredibly important state for turkeys. Most of you know that there are significant declines across the Southeast right now. And the more data, the more research we can get, the better we can equip our state agencies to make decisions moving forward about these birds. I know a lot of you are probably asking, well, why just Alabama? Why not my state if you're from somewhere else? I totally get it. We're small, like I mentioned earlier at THP. We've got to tackle these things one thing at a time from our perspective. And we feel like if we put enough resources into Alabama for spring of 2022, then we can go down there and we can show you guys the progress that we're making with that research. Then next spring, we'll fund a different state. Go over to that link that I'm gonna post below. Feel free to donate if y'all would. I think Hayden's gonna throw in a free sticker kit if anybody donates up to $100. That's great, that's on us. We're gonna start off by throwing five grand into the pot. So if we can raise 30 more thousand dollars, we can get these sites established in Alabama by next spring. Hopefully they'll grow into even more because that's what we need in a lot of these places. They don't have data, they don't have research. That's what they need in order to make decisions about these turkeys. So really appreciate y'all's help. We're gonna head back out of the woods and get back after them here in Missouri. Good luck hunting guys, thanks. Let's go, do an interview. We gotta get back in there. We got a short little walk to get back here to where these birds are, but we're gonna sneak back there in the dark and get as close as we can to them. Got Hayden along this morning, got some decoy. See what we can do with these birds. Hopefully we can call them right up on top of that ridge this morning.
bag from the wet wipes and <laughs> <laughs> gobbled at it. He's close. Can we call him up to right here, you think? And just He's right there. Set the decoy up or not? I do kind of care about this one. Okay. We just had that bird within 50 or 60 yards for probably 30, 45 minutes. And it's so thick in here that we can't shoot very well. And he got to a point where he could see that there was no hens over there, so we just sat over there and drowned forever. Gobbled back. Now he's moved back down to the bench that he was on before. So we're moving up to where he was at, and it looks like it opens up quite a bit, actually way down low, so we might end up going down there and try to call him back in, but he just gobbled again, so 
Ted said he eventually just uh, headed back over the ridge. We can hear him dropping and gobbling over there. Hopefully we can get in a new setup and call him back in. See what he does with that, I guess. Huh? See what he does with that, I guess. To the right, Jake. See him up top, yep.
but I think he can. So let him do his thing unless he gets nervous. And if you got an open shot, shoot him. <laughs> Alright baby, get up there. <laughs> Shut up, buddy. <laughs> oh. Woo. He's good, he's tough. Right baby, how you doing? <laughs> How's that feel? That feels good. <laughs> you got some cinnamon face looking stuff. Atta right, boy. Atta boy. Nice. <laughs> awesome. Dude, look at the rope on that thing. Yeah, he's real cinnamon. Guys, <laughs> dude. <laughs> <laughs> What'd he do? He was, we crawled up here. Yeah. We got to like right here. I don't know, I think we called. He got right there. So he set up. Then he just went quiet, and we're like, we're both just like, I bet he didn't go up on top there. On that other hillside, and look over here. Uh -huh. Exactly what he did, he went up there. He was just looking over here, pecking around, strutting a little bit. And then, he started working to the right, and you started calling. Uh -huh. And then he just, eventually just worked his way. He was way up there, like 30 yards. Probably where he was sitting before when uh -huh. we were up top there, just yeah, from that sure. same place. But he was just working his way around to you. Yep. I mean, probably wouldn't come into you, but maybe he would have, but he didn't. He was definitely coming morning. right towards you. you know. A coyote did. Really? A coyote really? came like 10 yards. <laughs> <Sweet>. <laughs> at first I thought, like, because he gobbled at, when I first started calling, he responded to that. Uh -huh. And then that coyote, like, crept over the hill. And That's I was cool. kind of concerned that he spooked the bird. And, yeah. but. Looks like you did. Good <laughs> <laughs> job. <for Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Dude, that thing is. I, I noticed that when he was walking up that hillside. It's like he's really like red or cinnamon. Yeah, he's got cinnamon. Yeah, I thought the same thing. He's a cool looking bird. Yeah, he's got like cinnamon. <gasps> Dude, you smashed him. <laughs> That's a day there. That feels good. That feels great. We were in them Especially all day. Especially after uh, yesterday. <laughs> yeah. The whole I mean. morning we were within 150 yards of this turkey. Oh, probably. Yeah. Oh yeah. And yeah, I think that he is the one that came in and in. or kinda <laughs> called him in like three different times. Kind of similar got... to that bird yesterday. Maybe like I said, maybe that maybe that's just just, just his thing. He comes yeah. in, turns that around. Was a that was a good idea to have Hayden call like that. Yeah. Good job. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> it was because he wasn't gonna yeah. come into what he wasn't gonna come exactly where the call was coming from. Coming. 
yeah, just enough gonna, to try and pull the hand. That's what's nice about yeah. yeah. That's what's nice about having somebody drop back is they're not expecting to like he didn't he, didn't, he I guess he looked down here a couple times, but he was never like looking for us. He was more no, so concerned was, about where the column. I thought maybe he'd go right up over top, but then it's like he's not gonna do that. He hasn't done that all morning. Yeah, he was just gonna circle, right, and he doesn't want to go on top because it's thick too. Mm -hmm. So he's just circling around. That's what I was gonna say. That's why it makes sense. He's just spending his whole day down this bowl and this is perfect down in the shade mm -hmm. and he's got stuff that's not burned burned creek everything you can need and then he Sun can't be the heard very well from the road down here either yeah. like this is one of the only spots that we haven't been here this hooting. is about as far from the road as you can get on this side of the river yeah well, that was a fun one. that's exactly that's <laughs> those are the fun hunts and it's just like pick away pick away pick away uh -huh. out until you get him. Glad to hear the gun go off. <laughs> yeah. Me too. <laughs> Heck yeah. Alright, we're just getting back to camp. Morb texted. He said, y'all get him? I said, no. Nah. Then he said, they battled one for six hours. Scotty missed him. He said, what's your plan now? I told him we're heading back to camp and they're here too, so they don't know that we got one. It's always fun to mess with Morb. You guys got face paint? Oh, yeah. yeah. Fresh burn face paint. Yeah. Oh, nice. Sparkle from the trees. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Woo! Nice. Cinnamon face. Congrats, brother. You <laughs> just got him right after you called. Yeah. You guys hit this bird <laughs> on the highway? I just texted you and all I got back was nah. <laughs> like, you have any luck? Nah. So that's what they look like, huh? Dude! Color face. Red face, oh, wow. bird. Red face. <laughs> It's only nice. the third, t third time he came in today. Third uh, time he came in? Boy, we just have got some similar stories, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> I got more gray hairs after dealing with this thing. Oh, man. Lemon bird. <laughs> just hardcore lemon bird. So we were just like, screw it. We'll sit here. And he's going to come up and you're going to have skull capping because that's all you're going to get. <laughs> just hear him walking right there. Yeah. I mean, from here cool. to the front of Jake's car. Just right over the right yeah, just, over the ridge. I had my gun on. like pretty much pointed in the exact spot the whole time. Yeah. But there was all the there was like some logs like that, you know, and I'm like, he's not gonna try to come through that those logs, you know, he'll probably just circle around. So I pointed my gun to where I thought he was gonna pop out, you know. By the time his head popped up in my original spot. <laughs> uh, I had to do a you know, make a move like that. Got it. <laughs> End of story. Yeah, it was a pretty rough one. After fighting with him all morning. <laughs> Drew myself from my shed. Painted on that shiny car letter of his RCMP. Feel a little aching in my head. I got my help. John B. Stetson. Got a bottle. 